In this review of Nikon SnapBridge, you'll see it auto-transfer images to post to Instagram or edit in Lightroom, and remote shooting for stills and video. Hey photographers! Although it's taken a while, the free camera apps that work on your phone or tablet are finally reaching a level of reliability, usability, and functionality that makes them worth the effort. Did I mention they're free? And available for both Android and iOS. Now, often I just glance at them in my camera reviews, so today I'm going to take a detailed and honest look at Nikon SnapBridge. Version 2.6 has just been released for iOS. It supports both phones and tablets. Not all cameras are supported. I'm using the Z7, the Z6, the D500, the D850, D3400, D3500, and the D7500 are also supported, and several more models that are listed on Nikon's download page. Now, are there any trivia buffs who remember which was the first app for cameras? More detail on that at the end. I'm reviewing Nikon SnapBridge 2.6 with the Nikon Z7 and assuming maybe incorrectly that the features available on this camera are also available on the others. Uh, please use the comments to let us all know when that's not the case. I've downloaded the iOS version to my iPad. It's a larger display screen, which is better for this video. Throughout the process, the app asks for permissions. I'm not going to read them all to you, but I'm going to confirm them all. I'll just leave it to you to be more restrictive. These screens and sequences are edited. It's not really as fast as I'm making it appear. After the welcome screens, choose the style and camera from the menu. Select your connection type. I'm using Bluetooth to enable the always available connection. And then an animated wizard walks through the connection steps. There are steps to follow on both the camera and the device. More confirmations as required by iOS. Once connected, open the Auto Link menu to select the options to download images as they're taken, to coordinate clocks between device and camera, and to send GPS location information from device to camera to tag photos. More confirms in a quick walkthrough of the app's main features. When you take a picture, an icon appears above the camera, then a progress bar at the top. Switch to the photo screen to see your image, which appear a few seconds after they're taken. Images can be deleted, which removes them from the device, not the camera. And images can be shared using the tools available on your device, like messages, email, and Instagram. By default, these are two megapixel images. One of the capabilities added in this release was the ability to transfer raw images. To do that, select Download Pictures, which asks for approval to switch to Wi-Fi. iOS confirms the switch. Use Display Options and tap File for JPEG or RAW files. Images with RAW files are now displayed. Select one or more images and then download to transfer to the device. There's still an option to resize to 2 megapixels. Original format copies the RAW file. Downloading takes a while. It is a 50 megabyte file. Return to the library. Select the option to return to Bluetooth and use the Lightroom Share option to copy the image and use Lightroom's tools to manipulate your image. I didn't find a Maps option in Lightroom on my iPad to display geotags. But using Photos, the People and Places map shows the location where images were taken. The remote photography capability also switches to Wi-Fi, and the app can now be rotated to Landscape. A switch at the top selects Photo or Video. This is independent of the setting on the camera. In Photo mode, the Exposure mode can be selected again independently of the camera. In Manual, controls across the bottom select Shutter, Aperture, and Exposure Compensation. If Auto ISO is enabled on the camera, then ISO setting is disabled in the app. Otherwise, with Auto ISO off, the ISO in the app can be set from 100 to 25,600, which is less than the full range, and Auto ISO can't be activated either. White balance can be controlled regardless of the setting on the camera. 
you can't select the meter mode, a picture control color profile, or change the drive mode to burst. But the settings menu can activate a 3, 5, or 10 second timer. The focus settings, neither mode nor area, can be changed in the app. With the camera in AF single, with single point, pinpoint, or wide area, the focus spot can be set using touch on the screen. There is a slight delay between pressing the shutter button and taking the photo, and then the image is transferred to the app. When the camera is in manual focus mode, you can't focus with the app. When I switch to video, first, any white balance setting is overridden to auto, and now there are no exposure or focus controls. The app records that the current video settings, this is 4K30, although there's no indication on screen. The data rate for this recording is about 120 megabits. I've set the Z7 to manual exposure mode, as shutter and ISO controls are not available in the other video exposure modes. And for focus, I'm using full-time autofocus with auto area, that enables face detect, the square shows that it's working. Uh, while I'm finding video mode useful, and I did use it for my on-camera scenes in this video, I do have to configure all of the settings on the camera before switching to remote, and the refresh rate on the remote display varies. <laughs> Although the app offers the ability to transfer videos from the camera to the device, that's not a capability I'd recommend unless the recordings are short and at a lower resolution than 4K. For example, a normal quality HD 30 version of this segment, about 73 seconds, took over two minutes to transfer longer than real time. The third menu icon opens Image Space, Nikon's free online photo site where you can store an unlimited number of 2 megapixel thumbnail images. This is a second independent app, but settings here control auto-upload to image space and set images to upload only when using Wi-Fi. In this case, that's not the camera's ad hoc Wi-Fi, but a network that has access to the internet. It is easy to create trivia questions, but harder to find the answers. I did some research, but didn't find a conclusive answer to determine who was first. In my mind, it was Sony, but I trust that you'll help me out with a correction or more details. Now, you may find some of this functionality useful or useless. That will depend on your style and your needs. I find it useful to have photos automatically transferred to my phone. That makes it easy to post them or to share them with my friends using email or airdrop. And do keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. Now, if you have relevant questions or civil comments, I am happy to reply. And I'm planning to detail more apps in upcoming videos. Thanks for your votes. Fujifilms is next and Sony. Let me know which others you'd like. And I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. Your interest and support is appreciated. And if you are thinking about subscribing, remember that it is free and there's no obligation, but please act before midnight.